Imagine what if, in a world of managers and software can't write software, the chief technology officer can't code, executives can't execute. Yeah, this is truly Boeing's world today. The giant aerospace's humiliation was plain for the world, since they failed to build a spacecraft that could perform the most basic function, safely ferrying astronauts to and from the ISS. What a shame for a legendary that left its footprint in the dawn of the U.S. aerospace industry. So why did it end up so badly? Elon Musk recently exposed why the Starliner project in particular, and Boeing in general, failed. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The tension hearing between Boeing's boss and the angry U.S. senators in Washington has paved the way for a dark period for the aerospace giant. Following the Senate Federal, it's turned to U.S. prosecutors, who are about to decide to whether criminally charge the company for violating a settlement related to two fatal crashes of the 737 MAX plane. At the same time, the Boeing Starliner spacecraft has been stranded on the ISS for nearly half a month with no promise of a return date. The situation grew more serious as it was piled on blunder. The incidents on Boeing's main aircraft lines and its spacecraft are what the engineers of the firm could predict. The lack of transparency and quality and safety, the weak management apparatus chasing profit rather than quality, and the toxic culture contribute to Boeing's fall down. Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO who is notoriously for the correct philosophies in operating and managing a tech company, pointed out another root cause, the operator's educational background. The CEO of an aircraft company should know how to design aircraft, not spreadsheets. Of course, it's not the first time he mentioned to cause of the failure of a Titan. On May 7th, after Boeing's first launch attempt was canceled, Elon chided Boeing on X for employing too many non-technical managers. A technical manager generally oversees the development, implementation, and maintenance of technological company systems and processes, including troubleshooting any potential issues. Non-technical managers, on the other hand, tend to be focused on broader aspects of a company like strategic planning, communication, and decision-making. Also, in 2022, Musk opined about non-technical managers. I strongly believe that all managers in a technical area must be technically excellent. Managers in software must write great software, or it's like being a cavalry captain who can't ride a horse. Elon Musk has applied this principle in building SpaceX's foundation. Everything started from him. When the rocket concept started to grow in his mind, he learned a lot about the fundamentals of rocket design and astrodynamics from reading books. The strong background in physics and engineering benefited him a lot to understand the principles of rocketry. Through the interview between Elon Musk and the YouTuber Everyday Astronaut, his knowledge of Starship and spaceflight has incredibly impressed the viewers. In hindsight... Oh, he's saying we don't know what we're doing. And what have they done? Oh, exactly. That's, yeah. that's Seems to be an armchair rocket engineer. Exactly. SpaceX's board of directors, although come from many different fields, also have working experience with Tesla Motors, PayPal, computer services company Netscape, and Impulse Space Propulsion. Elon Musk, while working with them, also learned a lot to perfect his knowledge. This is the core weapon driving SpaceX to become dominant in spaceflight currently. So how about you? Do you agree with Elon Musk's idea? As always, say yes if you agree. Anyway, if you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. Boeing's leadership, on the other hand, is pure bean counters and has little knowledge of rockets. As a result, Boeing, from being the gold standard of human spaceflight, took itself to the tragically incompetent clown. Boeing was once a company of engineers, by engineers for engineers. We see its heritage in space back to the earliest days of the U.S. venturing into space. Its fingerprints appear on major aspects of Apollo and the International Space Station, for example. But now it has become a corporation of speculators, by speculators, for speculators. Thanks to the merger with McDonnell Douglas nearly 30 years ago, Boeing's leadership has transformed from high-quality and loyal engineers to finance guys. And even the current Boeing CEO, Dave Calhoun, has a degree in accounting. McDonnell Douglas management proudly proclaimed they transformed a mere engineering firm into a viable Fortune 500 corporation. 
What we see today is the result of this transformation. Worse, under Dave's era, the true engineers were treated badly. In the interview with 60 Minutes Australia, Boeing's whistleblowers shared the shocking truth about the quality assurance at Boeing. They didn't want to have to wait on quality. They were in a hurry all the time to get the airplane moved from finished and moved from one position to the next. So if you're slowing them down, you're costing them money? Yes, time and money. Additionally, when the FAA went and toured the facility, they found one door seal being lubricated with Dawn liquid dish soap and cleaned with a wet cheesecloth, and another was being checked with a hotel room keycard. This is what Boeing has done with the commercial aviation sector, which makes up a total of 44% of Boeing's revenue. So how about defense, space, and security with 32% of the share? Are we sure that this secondary sector will be focused more in terms of safety and quality? This raises more concern about Starliner's capability to bring astronauts home safely. Therefore, a rescue mission on a much more reliable vehicle, SpaceX Dragon, for example, is very needed. After the successful liftoff on June 5th, astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams soared into space and docked with the ISS after a long, tough journey on the Starliner. They should have stayed in there for roughly one week, but the difficult problems on Starliner have left their return date still up in the air, and NASA is now furiously trying to help solve the problem. Many experts suppose that Boeing rival SpaceX could serve as a lifeboat in this case, bringing them home board its Crew Dragon spaceship. Rudy Rodolfi, former Space System Commander and Space Technology Acquisition Manager said, good news is that they are on the ISS and not like the Apollo 13 trying to get home from the moon. But I wouldn't be surprised if someone at NASA is getting a SpaceX Dragon capsule ready for a rescue mission. According to NASA's internal schedule, Dragon Crew 9 will occur no earlier than August. It will arrive at the space station for a short-duration handover with NASA's SpaceX Crew 8 mission. Sharing the same idea, Mike Gruntman, professor of astronautics at the University of Southern California, said, It is more likely that SpaceX would be able to provide an additional launch in the foreseeable future to bring the astronauts back. Katsuo Kurabayashi, professor of aerospace engineering at New York University, added, Given the current situation with the Starliner, it is possible that NASA could decide to use an alternative spacecraft, like SpaceX's Crew Dragon, to bring the astronauts home safely. The final decision would depend on the severity of the helium leak, the feasibility of repairs, and the logistics of arranging another spacecraft for the return mission. Apparently, Boeing does not want to do that because the outcome will serve as a severe blow to the bruised reputation of the firm. Boeing has spent about $1.5 billion in cost overruns beyond its initial $4.5 billion contract with NASA in hopes of making Starliner a second option to reach the ISS. NASA and Boeing officials have reiterated that the current problems aboard the Starliner don't indicate the need for SpaceX to lend a hand. Michael Lembeck, an aerospace engineering associate professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, who served as a consultant for Boeing's spaceflight division from 2009 to 2014, told that the Starliner is still likely to be Wilmore and Williams' ride back to Earth. Right now, I'd say the need for SpaceX to step up is very low, Lembeck said. We would have to see a big problem come up in the next couple of days to warrant that reaction. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.